This is Keith Boggs of Stonebriar Property Inspections, and this is the inspection debrief for 450 Rustic Oaks Road. I've taken about 180 pictures and several videos, so I'm going to review all this stuff with you now. Um, later today, you're going to receive two things. You're going to receive a recording uh, that I'm doing right now, which will include everything, and then you'll uh, get the uh, home inspection report and the second email, which will just include the items that you want to negotiate with the uh, with the seller, the seller's agent, uh, <clears throat> most, of, most of the big things. Uh, there will still be a bunch of things in here. Most of them will be in the report, but there will be a few things that I'll, I'll just be telling you about, just really for your information kind of stuff. Also, some of these pictures are just for my use to remind me to do things, or just for my records, uh, stuff like that. So, of the 180 items, there won't be that many in the report, but there will be a lot, uh, 100, probably 100 or more. Um, anyway, the first picture you see here is, uh, let me open it up. <clears throat> Picture of the front of the house, nothing necessarily wrong. That's just for the title page of the report. One of the very first things I do is check the low flow indicator on the water meter. So right, right in the center of the water meter uh, is a little kind of silver, kind of a star. Um, and that will spin around when the water is on. So if everything in the house is off, nothing's running, this should sit completely still. So this is a way of verifying, uh, verifying if there's any kind of supply leaks to the house. So I've got a little video here. It's, it's about 30 seconds long, and it, uh, we'll be looking at this. And this is this will be for the recording. Again, this won't be in the report, but you'll have it for this recording. And again, so we're just looking at the center of the of the meter here, and it's sitting completely still. I, I started it started it for a couple minutes, and then and then the last 30 seconds, I just take a little short video to show you that there's no movement. <coughs> so there were there wasn't any supply leaks uh, at the time of the inspection. And it's about halfway done now. Okay. Next thing is I, uh, I walked the roof and I took some pictures of some of some of the thing, uh, some of the things on the roof. I uh, also have a short video, uh, a couple minutes of the roof. Uh, people are always asking me about the condition of the roof, so I just started taking videos of the roof. So after you'll see you'll see several pictures, and then we'll be watching a, a video here. Uh, this is your mortar cap at your fireplace stack, and you can see the, the mortar cap is loose and cracking. Um, so this needs to be, uh, and there's also some loose bricks. We'll see here in a second. This needs to be repaired because you could get water intrusion into the house um, through, the, through the fireplace cap. So uh, we want it sealed up as best as possible. So that's one thing you definitely want to ask for. And then you can see some loose bricks there, and some loose, bri loose mortar, loose bricks, and some missing bricks. Uh, same thing here, some loose mortar. Okay, now this is the video of the roof. It's actually two minutes and a half long. So again, I'll go ahead and play it so we have this recording. You may hear me, hear me talking or breathing hard or something. Uh, walk around the roof. Or maybe I'll see a defect here and I'll, and I'll talk about it. You see some mortar laying there. That's from the fireplace. It's a good, good quality roof. It's not a, not a builder grade, you know, three tap shingle roof. It's a decent quality roof, so it really wasn't any kind of any kind of uh, damage to it. It's in good shape. Looks like it's fairly new. They probably disclosed that in disclosure. Um, so probably, you know, depending on the weather, if we get any bad storms, of course, that can make a difference. But roof should be good probably for another 15 years. Again, depending on conditions and 
whether you have tree branches fall on it or whatever else. That's just cosmetic. That's a, yeah. yeah, that's just cosmetic. That's not uh, going to affect the venting. Yeah, I think we're near the end here. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so um, there's lots of vegetation around the structure, touching the structure underneath the, the drip edge of the guttering. Um, so these are all conducive conditions uh, for, also to get some high soil, conducive conditions for termites. And so if you're doing a VA, VA loan or FHA loan or some small banks, uh, they may require you to um, remediate these conditions before they'll fund the loan. Uh, in other words, trim away the vegetation from touching the structure, uh, lower or lower or treat the uh, the high soil, uh, and really any any vegetation under what's called the drip edge of the of the guttering uh, would would they want that trimmed away? But most time they're happy as long as it's not touching the structure. So lots of vegetation. You'll see several pictures of that. Um, and again, I won't put every picture in, but uh, we'll talk about it right now. <clears throat> this is your condenser. Again, you got some vegetation growing up around the condenser. Not doing anything now, but you want to you want to you want to keep that stuff trimmed away that can damage the, the condenser and cut down on airflow and efficiencies. But this is your condenser here. Uh, this is your manufacturer's label. I use this. This is really just for me. I use this to look at. It was well, a 2006, so it's about 12 years old. So it's not it's not super new. Um, the uh, max breaker is what I look at it for. So the max breaker is 45. So when I look at the panel box, I use that there. So. This is really, again, just for me. You'll see some more of this kind of stuff. <clears throat> this is a GFCI behind the condenser, and uh, it's defective. You can see I'm trying to test it with this tester, and it's not tripping, so that needs to be repaired. That's something will definitely be in the report, that GFCI right there. Uh, this is your propane tank. We don't inspect propane, so that's something you're going to have to contact. Uh, uh, I know there's a sticker on there, but I couldn't see that the, the, the uh, phone number was faded. You couldn't see it. So I would just ask the homeowners who services this and have them come out, unless they've been out recently, and just, just double check the, uh, the propane. But again, that's something that uh, that's part of the optional items, uh, which is gas, but propane is something we I just never come across very rarely, so it's not something I inspect. Uh, this is, again, this is more vegetation. Uh, this is the water pressure to the house. So the range for water pressure is 40 to 80, and you're about 50. Uh, it seemed fine. So it's not a super huge house, so 50 should be should be fine for that house. Um, this is again, this is just for your information. This is high soil or anything above what's called the brick ledge, which you can see here, but you can't see here. That's cons considered a conducive condition for termite. So again, they're gonna want you to lower that or treat it. If you were doing conventional loan or you're paying cash, then it won't matter. Uh, this is oops, this is a, a damaged window screen. There's a couple of those. Some of them are missing too. So Pretty small, small thing, but it's one of the things the state of Texas requires that we call out any damage or missing screens. So you'll see a couple of damaged screens, and there's some screens that are missing. Um, and there'll just be a, a little blurb in the, in the report about that. <clears throat> That's another screen. That's at both of these windows right here. Uh, this is, again, what's considered high soil. Anything above the brick ledge where you can't see the foundation. Uh, heavy vegetation. And then these three window screens are missing. This threshold here really should have a little footer underneath here. When you actually step on it, you can see the door kind of moving. So you get something, a, a fairly big person that happens to step on that, they could break it off or uh, possibly the doors are shut, maybe damage the door. So should be a little a little footer underneath there kind of helping support that from any kind of weight that's, that's, a, that's put on that threshold. Uh, these are two more windows that are missing window screens. You'll see me using some sign language in here. Most of it you'll be able to understand, but there's a a few things that uh, you may not, it's just me using sign language for myself, so I find a little made up thing so I can uh, document things. Uh, this is again uh, more vegetation. <clears throat> this is a vent hood, actually, I was able to pull it off. It should be screwed into the veneer and then sealed around it. So at this point, you could get a rodent or some type of animal, knock that thing off, and then they can go right into the, the dryer duct and possibly get into the house. So that needs to be, um, and you don't want to screen this either. So people do that because it collects lint. Uh, so it needs to be affixed to the to the structure to the veneer and then seal around the perimeter to keep moisture from getting in and that's just where it's located right there 
this is to show you that the, the spigot on that side of the house there, it, it does leak. And as you see my hand is wet there, it's leaking from the handle there. So that's something that needs to be repaired. It's a minor thing, uh, something that needs to be repaired. And that's on that same side of the house there. <clears throat> this is really, there's really little structural movement that I saw, which is good because it's a fairly old house in uh, Texas. We're known for having movement to the soils. Uh, this is, but this is a little cracking of a mortar joint. It's really just cosmetic. Uh, you'll see it up here at the front of the house. Really no other major exterior cracking. I don't think there's really too much that's going on on the inside either. Um, but the foundation looks good. It looks like it's to be stable. Now, if you're still concerned about the, the foundation, you still have the option to, to call a structural en engineer out there and then have him do his assessment. Uh, you know, that's up to you. I think probably in this case, you don't need that. Uh, but I, wanted, I do not want to discourage you from doing that. This is more vegetation touching the structure. Same thing. Uh, this, this door here is actually, uh, you can't open it. There's a room back there. I'm assuming that they have it stuck in place so uh, so somebody can't open it. But there's a, a room back there, which you probably know about. But that was I couldn't get that to open. I'm assuming that's why. <clears throat> this is a little piece of tape and a, a wall ceiling uh, junction joint, and it's just coming loose. This is it's not this is not a structural thing. It's just these over over time the adhesive gets gets weak, and some of this tape will come loose. So that's an easy repair. Something you can do yourself. And that's an example of one thing that probably won't not be in the report but because uh, it's so simple and you, and you can do it but again it's in this recording <clears throat> this is in that same room it's a, a, a cracked window that window right there needs to be replaced and then you've got some failed windows so this is a failed window in, in that room uh, that's the window right here these are some nail pops these in this in this case are not structurally significant now, if you see those they're almost always just cosmetic that's some more some more and that's just up in the ceiling area here in the corner of that room this is another failed window a failed window means that the, uh, the, the gas that makes its energy efficient is called argon gas or krypton gas <coughs> it escapes and that makes the window now it's no longer energy efficient it will fog over and get dirty uh, and you won't be able to clean it um, you know so you'll have to either have to reseal it and deal with it being dirty or um, replace the window Different prices for those for those different things. <clears throat> and that's the window. This is your double oven. And again, this is just for our benefit for me to talk to you now. I believe your husband said you're going to replace this. It's quite it's very old. Uh, this is the manufacturer's label here. That's really just for me. Uh, so they both both ovens were heated to 350. Top oven heated just below 375, which is within the range. The range is 325 to 375. And then the lower oven actually pegged over 400. So the lower oven is not adjusted properly, and this is going to uh, overcook stuff if you're not careful. Uh, this is just to show you that I did have both of them set on 350 and bake. Uh, this is your microwave on a manufacturer's label. Again, won't be in the report. This is me showing that the microwave does work. That's a, a bottle of water I'm heating up. Uh, this is your cooktop. There's a problem with the cooktop. It's a nice Jenner cooktop. I think your husband said you're going to keep that. Three of the uh, burners did work, and one of them did not. So that bottom right worked, bottom left worked, top left worked. Uh, the other one, top right, did not work. This is a little bit. Of, this is a little bit of separation of the, uh, the splash wall from the uh, countertop in the kitchen. Again, this is not. It's from movement, but it's not something that's structurally significant. This really just needs to be caulked and and uh, redone. That and that's just in this kind of kitchen area around this uh, little area here. And you, may, and you may see some of that stuff that's, again, not structurally significant. This is your dishwasher. I believe this is also getting replaced. But uh, it, when I first reading on it, it wasn't heating. It did eventually heat. That was just my first reading on it. Uh, underneath the sink, there's an open junction box here. It used to be wiring. I'm guessing it went to the disposal. It's no longer there. Uh, but you can't have wires just sitting out in the open, especially uh, uh, in an area where there could be water. So this, these either need to be removed or need to put be put inside of a, a junction box contained within that box uh, to protect people from touching it, getting shocked. Uh, probably can just, just remove it. Uh, that's just where they're located right there underneath, underneath the sink. Uh, this is my sticker showing that I did do a uh, inspection here. Um, if you're a licensed person and you do an inspection or if you do a treatment, you've got to leave a sticker with uh, your license number and what you did. If you did a treatment, it's just the uh, chemical you use, the, the bug you're trying to kill. And the percentage of the chemical. So this is just a. Uh, I, I think I scratched. It's not. It wasn't a treatment. It's actually just a, 
uh, inspection. So, uh, but if, if I didn't find any termites, so if you have any show up within 12 months from when you close, you call the phone number here in Dallas, and uh, they'll come and treat it for free. <clears throat> That's just where it's located. Uh, this is your, uh, they're using it for soap that used to be what's called an air gap, and that's for cross-contamination from the disposal and the dishwasher. So that air gap is no longer no longer present, uh, so there is a chance of, of contamination from the from the dishwasher, at least. The disposal is gone. Um, so uh, if you're going to install another uh, disposal, which I'm assuming you will, most people do, uh, you can have them remove this soap dispenser and put an actual air gap there. Actually, I think they make soap dispensers that, are, that function as air gaps too, but you'd have to ask your plumber. <clears throat> That's just where it's located. This is a loose outlet in the kitchen. Again, this is just for your benefit. It's just to show that it's loose and uh, so it needs to be tightened up. That's very simple to do. <clears throat> That's where it's located, right there in the kitchen, right behind the microwave, uh, the uh, dishwasher. Uh, this is an attic area that, uh, that the uh, scuttle hole area that I didn't have to enter. I thought it was the only place to enter. I was going to put in the report that I couldn't access it because there were personal belongings. But there's actually another entrance uh, that I was able to access the, the air handles and look at the attic. Uh, so they just ignore that. This is a failed window. This is when you can actually see the moisture. Uh, that's that, that right window and that, that built out uh, looks like a garden area, almost office garden area. Uh, this is another failed window. And that's on the left side in that, in that room. And then you've got three failed windows here. This is the second living area. Uh, this is a corner bead separation. Uh, this is not structurally significant. It's just a piece of metal that they use from those corners, and then they paint them, and they get it over time. They can just become loose. So that just needs to be nailed back in place, caulked, and painted. And that's just located here. This is that, this is showing a little bit of inside structural movement, some cracking. It's a pretty straight line. That, again, not structurally significant. So this be a mention of, of interior cracking. And that's where it's located, right there. We got three more windows in the. I think it's the breakfast nook here. Uh, yeah, that's the little breakfast area. Uh, the three windows are failed. Uh, the reason I took a picture of this is it looks to be very old uh, smoke detector, um, and there's no smoke detectors in the bedroom, so. Today, they require smoke, smoke detectors inside of every bedroom, outside of grouping of bedrooms, and a few other places. But in this case, it'd just be the bedrooms and outside the grouping of bedrooms. But this appears to be over 10 years old, and so the industry standard is to replace them every 10 years because they can test properly, but they may not work in the case of a fire. So that needs to be uh, replaced, and then uh, three need to be installed in the bedrooms. <clears throat> uh, four, I'm sorry, four bedrooms. This is your water heater. Manufacturer's label again, both these really just for me. This type of uh, connections with the hot and cold, the cold in, inside and the, the hot outlet. Um, this steel, uh, braided steel, is, is can have little pinhole leaks. So uh, the code requires that these connections be either rigid copper, uh, PEX, or CPVC. So this is two of these. These two are wrong. Very common for plumbers to use them because they're easy to work with. Obviously, they flex easy. <clears throat> this is your TPR uh, drain line, and it's corrugated. It should be like down here. It should be rigid copper. Uh, this corrugation is not allowed. Uh, it can actually uh, decrease the interior diameter of the of the uh, drain line. Uh, this is just some interior uh, uh, repairs have been done inside. I believe this is the master. Yeah, that was in the master. Uh, that's uh, some. I think I've got another picture of some. What looks like maybe there's been a repair. So you just want to ask. Just remember to ask the uh, homeowners. That the inspector said it looks like there was some type of repairs at the master ceiling. Just get them to disclose it or talk to you about it. Uh, this picture is one of the sinks, and the the spout is loose. You'll see me moving it there back and forth. Uh, so that needs to be tightened up. We don't want any loose uh, water fixtures. It could lead to leaks. They don't get any, any tighter over time. Only get looser. That's the second set. This is a fan that wobbles when you put it on high. That needs to be replaced, probably. Uh, that's just the fan right there about the closet. Uh, this is underneath one of the sinks. This little screen area here is a, a trap that they, 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 they use to put chemical in to kill uh, generally termites. So there has been a past treatment. Uh, if they haven't disclosed that, you need to ask them about that. Uh, it's possible this was done before that they were in the house, but that's something you want to just ask about. <clears throat> 
that's just where it's located. Uh, this is the master shower, and it's missing a sweep on the bottom of the door. Uh, so you'll get some if you're uh, you'll get some water splashing out to that tile. Uh, so you want to put a little rubber sweep on there. That's that master shower. Uh, this is a, a heat lamp in the master that doesn't appear to be working. This is a regular light. This is actually a heat lamp, and so that doesn't appear to be working properly. So that needs to be repaired. Uh, this is the master shower, and the the plumbing inside the wall is a little bit loose. Uh, so you can actually jiggle that. Uh, you'll see that. And it'd probably be fine. I wouldn't hang anything heavy from it. You've got this little shelf to put your diffuser and conditioner and whatever else uh, you want to put in there. So just uh, you know, just be careful with that. Uh, it also is, uh, you'll see here in the next picture, actually that's, a, I'm thinking of a different shower, but that, that one right there is a little bit loose, so you'll see that, again, it should be fine. <clears throat> it can be repaired up in the back side here, if you want to have it repaired, there's a, there's a little water closet here, and they can uh, just, instead of going through the tile and cost, costing a bunch of money, they can go through the, the drywall there and, and fix that inside the wall and then clear the wall. This is your uh, panel box, and the panel box is inside the master closet, and you can have panel boxes inside of, inside of the houses. You can have them inside of closets, but it has to have certain uh, certain clearances. And so this was six foot six tall, 30 inches wide, and 36 inches deep. Uh, if you can imagine, like a telephone uh, booth, the old old school telephone booths, about like that. So this doesn't meet the clearances, but this is very common during this during this time frame. Um, you don't want to cover it up with any any clothes or any boxes because it can overheat. If you look here at the sticker here, I think I've got another picture. Uh, you can see that it's 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 been charred a little bit, so it's, it's had some times where it's gotten kind of hot in there. Uh, so that's something you may want to think about having an electrician come out and, and take a look at that. There's inside the panel box. You can't really see in this picture, but they're doing what's called double tapping, or multiple tapping of the neutral wires. In other words, you're putting more than one wire under each terminal. Now, some of them will allow two, but definitely none will allow three. In this case, they're supposed to be one per terminal. And they've got several locations where they're, here you can see, where they're double tapping the neutrals. So that's a fire hazard uh, down here. A fire hazard can damage equipment, uh, possibly uh, possibly avoid any kind of warranties you had. <clears throat> there you go. Double tap, double tap. Yeah, there's a better picture of the uh, of the cover. You can see it's kind of charred, so it's obviously gotten hot a few times. And this is another loose fixture in the master. That's at that sink. So again, this needs to be tightened. This is a failed window. The master, both windows on each side of the bed, uh, both failed. Uh, this is showing a little bit of movement. Uh, this is called alligatoring. It looks like the back of an alligator kind of, kind of, and that's just the framing probably was not as tight as it could have been, and so it's moving uh, back and forth horizontally uh, at the ceiling. So nothing, nothing significant about that. Uh, just kind of par for the course for a house of this age, and it's not not really that much of a movement. Uh, this is the end of the master. <clears throat> This is t the tiles at the guest uh, tub, and the soap dish is obviously gone. You can see that. Uh, but some of these tiles are, are cracking, and it looks like they're getting loose. So uh, we want to get something in there to tighten up, you know, either reseal those, those, those tiles or find out what's loose and then remove them and replace them. Uh, this is the shower head. If you take a look at it, you'll see it move here in a second. Okay, so that should be not be to, you should not be able to do that with the shower head. <clears throat> so that guest bathroom shower head is... Not, also not done inside the wall properly. This is a failed window. This is in a uh, bedroom. Uh, this is actually back in the master still, I think. And this is also some more stuff in the ceiling. Nothing structurally significant. Uh, this is another bedroom, actually. And then, so this is a loose outlet in the bedroom, and it's missing its cover. Again, this is something that you just need to know about. It's a, a couple dollar fix. You can do that yourself. And that's where it's located. Uh, this is another failed window, and that's these both. This is a, one of the front bedrooms. Uh, both of these windows here are failed. These are some more uh, loose tape, a little bit of cracking, both not structurally significant. Just for your information, uh, this is a outlet in the uh, living area, the main living area, and let me flip this around. Uh, and the, well, you can see it's not lit up. Uh, at first, I thought it was a dead outlet, but it, if I jiggled that, it actually came on. So the wiring in this outlet right here uh, is loose, so that needs to be tightened up. 
see some cracking at a ceiling. You're near, actually near that same your living area, right along there. Again, just just paint and and, and uh, caulk and paint it. Now, this is the second reading of the dishwasher. It should reach between 120 and 150. So you can see we've got 127 here. So it was well over the 120 uh, and below the 150. Uh, this is a outlet that's missing a cover, and that's in the that back bedroom. Actually, both of those are missing covers, so the covers need to be installed there. Again, that's a cheap couple of dollar, you know, dollar fix. This is your filter, and it looks like they put the wrong size filter in there because it's got it's been sucked up into the into the into the return. Uh, don't want to. We want to have a filter that fits in there, and you want to change it every 30 days. These can over time collapse, uh, damaging the uh, the unit and possibly causing a fire. So, you want to put the right kind of uh, filter in there. This is attic access stairs, and you can see there's a fastener missing here, so that needs to be put a little bolt on there, a little quarter-inch bolt. You can get it at Home Depot for probably a dollar. Uh, this is the attic access stairs. They don't have enough fasteners here. You can see there's a missing fastener here. That should actually be a nail uh, or a quarter-inch lag bolt. Because we usually put them here in the, on the framing, so they're missing two at the front, two at the back, and on the sides. Uh, so those those are to help hold that staircase in place. I'll, I'll put the nailing pattern in the report. <clears throat> so open junction box in the attic. Again, that needs to be covered. We don't want to have any wires up there uh, where something gets shocked uh, or if it's open, you can get bugs or rodents making nests in there or something and cause a fire. Anyway, it needs to be, it needs to be covered regardless. Uh, this is some wiring, just electrical wiring going to that that junction box that's open uh, it's on the walkway leading to the the furnace so that's in a bad it needs to be protected you don't want somebody to accidentally it could be up here and not realize that they hit that wire and pull that wire loose and cause a short in the fire uh, or cause it to damage whatever it's connected to so those need to be you know in this case i would just put get a, you know, some plywood or something and just kind of lay it on top of it and kind of push these wires closer to the box so something if they walk on it they're not going to uh, do anything to it you don't nail it. If you nail it in place, don't nail it to the, the wire, obviously. <clears throat> this is a, uh, you've got steel, uh, steel ducting in there, which is normal at the time. Not as efficient as today, but it's, it's fine. It was, that's the way the house was built. Uh, and you do have plenty of insulation in there. This is your air handler and your furnace. They call it evaporator too. Uh, it's the pan. You can see it's covered with, uh, looks like dried up organic growth. There may be rust underneath there. So uh, that pan's going to be in the report for sure uh, to be uh, replaced and then you also want to have when they replace it have them put a flip switch on it uh, or a condensate switch and they also should be you can see the mold growing on the on the trap here that's from condensation uh, it can also drip onto the flooring or inside the attic that should be insulated that's a new code do, they should do that when they upgrade the when they change the pan <clears throat> uh, this is the ac differential so what we're looking for and i think i ended up not being a poke for the other duct, the other duct, so I had to go into the the main structure and take readings at the register. So this first reading was 61 on the air conditioning. Yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, I got better. I got other readings on that. So this wire going to the air handler, uh, it should be in a like a what's it called? I can't remember the name of it right now. You don't want this wire to be shaking in this unit. And eventually, uh, cut through this plastic covering and, and touch this metal. A metal uh, evaporator air handler to a, to the electricity in there so that needs to be repaired this is in the attic and you can see the light is hanging from the wires so again we don't want that that needs to be repaired and that's where it's located and your husband asked about a repair i believe the repair to the house that he said they had mentioned in the disclosure is of this fireplace stack you can see this mortar around the stack uh, around pretty much all sides. So I'm assuming that's the repair that they did. Uh, they disclosed it. didn't say where it was, though. Excuse me. I had to drink some water. Because <clears throat> uh, they've got a bunch of new insulation in the attic, which is great for energy efficiency, but you have soffit vents. Uh, this insulation is likely covering them because I do not see any baffles here uh, to keep the insulation off of the off of the, the vent covers, you know, which allow the attic to vent. <clears throat> so we want to have good circulation in there. You've got ridge venting, and so this venting, this needs to either be removed away from the, the ducting and then slide in some 
some baffles. Uh, it's, that's something that's required today. This installation looks new, so that's something they should at least talk to them about. <clears throat> this is the AC differential. So on AC, we're looking for a, a differential of 15 to 20 degrees. It's basically the difference between the return and the supply uh, or the, where the air blows and where the air gets sucked back to the unit. So we got a 45. And this is not the most accurate, but since you have steel ducts, I can't poke through them. Uh, but this is fairly accurate. Uh, they got a 45 and a 55. So it's a 10 degree differential. That's not good. And that's performing poorly. Uh, it should be, again, at the minimum 15 degrees. So uh, for that reason only, we're gonna, we need to put in the report for this uh, AC to be serviced and evaluated. Uh, we'll talk about the heat here in a little bit. Uh, this is when I first tested the heat. So you've got two modes here. You've got the other heat pump here. So you've got with heat pumps, you got regular heat and emergency heat. And uh, so the test, the test of the heat and the and regular heat, and it did not heat properly. I'll just ignore that. This is pictures. Your husband was wondering where the equipment, stereo equipment, was connected, and I believe it's behind the TV here. <clears throat> oh, this is a, another reading of the dishwasher. Or another look at the dishwasher because it started making a, a, a strange noise. I noted. I noted uh, it sounds like maybe the bearings are going bad, so I'll be calling out the dishwasher to be uh, serviced and evaluated. Uh, this is a light coach light at the front. Both of those did not come on. And maybe there's a switch somewhere that I don't know about that I couldn't find, uh, or maybe they're burnt out bulbs. So that's just something you need to talk to the sellers about there. And the other one's there. <clears throat> this is the, uh, uh, the heating again on the heat pump mode and 75, so it's not heating uh, on either one of those modes. I also tested it, turned it off, and then turned it back on and tested both these again, and they weren't heating. So I just to confirm that it wasn't just a glitch. So again, now the heating should be fully evaluated. So a full HVAC uh, evaluation and service I would recommend. <clears throat> uh, this is really for me. There's eight, uh, eight, eight zones. Uh, it'll be in the report. If you read the whole part, you'll see that somewhere. Uh, say so this is for zone one and zone one I cannot get it to come on so I'm assuming it's possibly a drip a drip line and maybe a pool fill so you just want to you know, talk to the homeowners and say you know the inspector said zone one didn't work you know is that a drip zone is that to fill the, to fill the pool we just want to know uh, where, what it's for and if it's a regular zone then it should have came on then they need to look at that zone and see why it's not uh, working right <clears throat> that's zone one Oh, that's just the propane tank again. Okay, you have to also have a septic here. The service records look like it was serviced on the uh, January of this year. You want to make sure. I didn't. I don't inspect septics. Again, it's one of those things that has never come across, or rarely come across. Um, when I was walking the backyard, I could smell what it smelled like sewage. Now, uh, there shouldn't be any smell coming from the, the septic tank. It should just be normal. The only thing you really will see is maybe a discoloration of the grass. That's because the drain field has just got some extra nutrients, so it gets it gets uh, <clears throat> a little greener. Uh, there also appeared to be some of these the sprinklers that come on when the septic gets too high. It'll it'll spray that water out. Possibly I was smelling that water. I was downwind, but I want to I want to I want to be positive about that. So I would have this, uh, even though it says it's been serviced, have somebody come out and take a look at the septic again and see if that smell was there. Uh, but again, that won't be in the report. That's just for your for your knowledge. <clears throat> this is a broken uh, sprinkler. That's over there by the propane tank, and it's in zone four. Uh, this is broken plumbing bubbling up under the ground. And that's in zone six. Uh, zone eight did not come on. I'm yeah, I'm sorry, it did not come on. So that's another zone we need to uh, ask them about. Uh, not coming on. That's what that means. Uh, this is again some readings at the heating again and it uh it's not heating again not heating not heating <laughs> so uh that's it and that's pretty much everything if you guys have any questions you can contact me seven days a week it's always best to text me first i can make myself available uh, then email is probably the second best option and then uh, of course you can leave me a message but it may take a, a long time for me to get back with you so uh, hopefully things go well at the house and, and you enjoy it thanks bye